Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So how have we ended up here? Why are people still, still exposing themselves to abuse, death threats, insults, uh, horrible, horrible treatments, if not because they genuinely, genuinely care for the country? I haven't got another explanation, but maybe you have. 22 minutes after 10 is the time. Ken is in Hale Zone. Why do you think they're doing it, Ken? Oh, good morning, James. Let me put my position into some kind of perspective. You just have a crack at answering I, the question first. Why, why do you yes, think... Yes, I will yeah, do, good. but it's important that you know... Hold on. I was a leaver. Okay. Uh, sorry, a Remainer. Of course you were. Strong are. Remainer. Yes. Absolutely distraught when we came out. Yes. And now I've sort of moved a bit over to the other side. Right. Now, the, the, the comment that you... The, the tempted me to phone you is the, the thought that Tony Blair would stick his head above the parapet for the benefit of moi for the benefit of me, just a beggar's belief. Well, it wouldn't just be you, um, Ken. Uh, it would be, it'd be the country that he was elected to lead on three separate occasions, wouldn't it? Yeah, I know. He sticks his head above the parapet because... Well, OK, well, let's, let's, leave, him out. let's leave him out of it, then. Let's talk about John Major or, or, or Gina Miller. What do you think motivates all of these people to expose okay, themselves... Um, to, you, to, to, to expo Hang on, I haven't finished. To expose themselves to precisely the sort of... Um, uh, feelings and words that you've just described yourself suffering from. So why do you think they do it? Anybody who has a, a deep belief will expose themselves to ridicule from people who happen to have an opposite opinion. But you That's don't have an opposite opinion. You voted to remain. I voted to remain. But so you I'm said, yes. So what do you think what, what do you think motivates I, I, all of these people who, who are talking about... I mean, the Road Haulage Association. Why would the government not be telling the truth to the government about delays at Dover or the British border in Ireland? Why do you think Mark Francois sticks his head above the parapet and argues the other side? Well, because he's desperate for attention and not very bright. But I asked you the question oh, first. So, so, OK, well, let me apply the same ridiculous statement to Tony Blair. He's not very bright. Right. I mean, you, you can't just... James, you are in a privileged position. No, I don't the, want on, to talk on, about on me a, today, a, Ken. National, you haven't answered my question program. yet. What, what motivates... Mate, you're supposed to be... To you it. voted to remain, remember? What motivates them is yes. their belief in that we should remain. It's and why do they obvious. believe that? Because, well, why do you believe we should remain? Because I why, think why that leaving, it, leaving will be disastrous, <laughs> and I have got pages exactly. and pages of evidence to, to support that but, position. But, but same same as you, other, same other as you, because you, you voted to remain, Ken, remember? Hold on. Other people don't believe that. And don't, they don't have pages say, and pages of evidence. So the question again can is, a, can you... I mean, James, you can, it's no good you're constantly trying to over-talk me. I'm not over-talking you, Ken. I'm insisting that you answer the question you've rung in to answer. I've answered the question. Okay. You've asked me the question. What yes. was the question? Why do they have a belief? Because they believe in in remaining. That's why. It's and why, um, no, why no, you have to go further than that. What, what are they basing no. their belief on, Ken? So when I say to you, oh, my Ken, friends... What are they basing their belief? Yes, OK, well, I'll ask you. I'll ask question, you then. James, what, I will do. What does Mark Francois base his beliefs on? OK, yeah, I'm asking you. Oh, Ken. Why, why does, why does Mark Francois... Get in front of the cameras and argue the opposite. I've already I'll told you. you. I'll, answer, I'll answer the question. Because he doesn't for you. understand it's anything. Because Oh, you can't just ridicule so, one person. Of course I can. And I would never dream of ridiculing one person. I, I ridicule several people every day. And I've got a horrible feeling I'm going to have to ridicule you unless you can answer I, this question. What evidence, I, answered, what evidence does Marc well, Francois base his beliefs on? I, all kinds of evidence he's then. collected over the years. He's not an idiot. Go on, then. What about, what about Jacob Rees-Mogg's, then? Well, we, we started well, with Marc Francois. We can move on if you want. But first, tell me what Absolutely. evidence... What's the favourite evidence Marc Francois has cited in defence of what you call his I'm, beliefs? I'm asking you that question. Oh, no, I'm you're not, Ken. You, you're not. I'm I've already answered it. I don't think he understands James, anything. So it, you, you think, think he's anybody right. Is listening to, anybody who's listening <sighs> to the radio really right God. now will see you're prevaricating, as you always do, yes. trying to avoid answering a question. Which question's that, Ken? You, let, let me... Let me just give me a second, OK? You're asking me why Tony Blair, John Major, people like that, 
um, subject themselves to abuse and ridicule to put forward an argument that they believe in. Now, I'm saying exactly the same to you from the other side. No, except you're not, because Why? you're ignoring the word evidence. No, I'm, I'm just... No, I, I forget evidence. I, well, just, I refuse I, to forget just, evidence, Ken. I'm sorry I, if you feel that I'm talking no, over you, you again, but I can't. we can't forget evidence. You, you are so what? verbally agile. No, it, I'm just... It, I'm just know, I am verbally you. agile, Ken. You're right, but I'm also asking you a very and simple you, question. Where's the evidence I, for what Marc Francois believes? Where's the evidence for what John Major believes? Well, you've got Operation Yellowhammer, you've got most of the Royal Colleges oh, of Medicine, you've got, you, the, you, you've got you, the government's... You've really killed Operation Yellowhammer. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. You have? No, I haven't. Play, play some of your recordings back. No, I won't, Ken, because it would be boring you for have... everybody else. But, but it, you've it, asked me... It, Ken, it, you it, can't keep James, doing this. You keep asking a question. Do, I answer it. Oh, Ken, talk this is awful, mate. Press, I'm not trying to talk press, over you, Ken. You can press your button to switch me off any time you choose. Well, exactly, and, and I didn't, did I? So, so why mention as, that? As, as long as I'm on here, I'm yes. going to ask my question. Go on, Ken. Is, ask it again. you apply a bit of balance yes. and ask the same question... But I just answered your side, question. The other side, you're asking the question, yes. why do they put their head above the parapet? Yes. I'm saying exactly the same. I'm no, but you're not, you, are you, mate? Are you? A fair, a fair, Right, Ken, I'm going to pause you now because I've let I've let you had a good old run out and and we, we, no, Ken, just calm down, my friend. Yes, I have. I have. Let's just run over it again, okay? I asked you what evidence he has for his beliefs, and you said it, it, in what I think you consider to be balance, what evidence is there for the other beliefs? To which I would respond by saying, all of the research, all of the impact assessments undertaken by both the last government and the previous government. If we were to talk about, for example, delays at Dover, I would say the documents leaked today from the current government. Operation Yellowhammer, dated as research undertaken for and by the current government. So the evidence for the beliefs of everybody from John Major and Tony Blair through to Anna Subri and Gina Miller, the evidence is the, uh, the, the research undertaken, not just by um, disinterested bodies like the Road Haulage Association, but by the actual government. So I've answered your question now at great length. I, I think out of courtesy, you should now answer mine. What evidence do you think Marc Francois has for his beliefs, Ken? What I should ask you, what you said that Marc Francois was an idiot. When I said, what about, did you or didn't you? Yes, so, I think he is an idiot, mate. I don't think that's controversial. Okay, so now was, I'm asking you to dis... Reason, Ken, where's the evidence? For, Ken, just, just your, mate, I've done it. I'm, we've run through it all now a thousand times. Oh, Ken, James, Ken, Ken, that. Ken, we've run through it a thousand times. I've answered your question. I've given you where the evidence comes from. Where does Marc Francois get the evidence for his beliefs? Fill your boots. Somebody else. You, can, you think you can talk out an argument all the time. Yes. If your argument the... is strong enough, you'd shut up and you'd bloody well listen. I, I have. I'm, I'm going to take Where's the, the evidence? pleasure of, sw of Where, curtailing my discussion but, with you. But you complained simply a minute ago. You complained a minute ago that that's what I do. You cannot answer the question. Where's the evidence? I think your question is a reasonable one. I'm answering it by choosing to say... Yes. Ask it of the other side. I have. They say Operation Yellowhammer, they say the Road Haulage Association, they say the impact assessments. What, what do you say? Well, I'm, I'm saying purely for the purpose of balance. Yes, Understand so, so, what I'm saying. So balance out your the evidence, with, Ken. Here's, here, here's, here's lots and lots of evidence. Your, Where's your balanced James, evidence? Your arguments would be so much stronger. Oh, Honestly, okay. you're a very articulate bloke. I'm yes. not patronising you. But your arguments would be so, so much stronger if you just applied a tad of balance. I am. Instead so in order, in order to balance... Can, yes, here we go, Ken. You see, you see you're shouting over there. me me while accusing me of doing the same to you. You're threatening to cut yourself off while accusing me of threatening to cut you off. Here we go. I listened, I listened to Nick this morning. Ken, here's the question. Here's the question. Okay. Yes. Well, how do you know that if he's balanced? How do you know that if he's balanced? Because I hear him putting both sides of the argument. Well, how do you know he's clearly right wing? How, how do I know you're clearly left-wing? Well, you, 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 you're drawing a contradiction between the two of us. 
No, I'm not. You, well, you, no, you, Ken, you actually you are, do, mate. As you always do. As you, you always do, you're making me feel silly. Language. Right, you, I'm late for the news. Final chance. I've given you all of the reasons, all of the evidence for why people believe that crashing out of the European Union with no deal would be disastrous. Most of the evidence comes from the actual government that's doing it. I want you to give me one little scintilla of evidence that you think supports the beliefs of people like Marc Francois. And this is balance, Ken. This is your big opportunity. This, in the words of Martine McCutcheon, could be your perfect moment. How would you balance out, just off the top of my head, Operation Yellowhammer? Where's the evidence? Where's the documentation? Where's the expertise? Over to Ken in Hales Owen now. In general terms, I'm telling you, or I'm requesting you, as a respected broadcaster, to apply a bill of balance. Yes, go on as then. Recall, Provide it. Last as I recall, you didn't last on Newsnight very long because no, I, you didn't apply balance. No, Ken, I had Good to night. leave Newsnight in order to keep telling the truth to people like you. So, final chance, that balance that you crave, where's the evidence, Ken? 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 Oh. Well, that's a new record, isn't it? Complain about the threat of being cut off and then four minutes later, cut yourself off. Alison's in Perth. Alison, what would you like to say? Um, I would just like to say that 17.4 um, million people voted to leave and it's democratic to abide with that decision. Yes. They, they didn't vote to be poorer. Um, well, a lot of people are poor at the moment. <laughs> yes, but, but they can still get poorer. They didn't vote for that, did they? Um... But I think a lot of it is supposition uh, uh, coupled with Project Fear. Right. Um, I do agree that we should not leave with a no deal. Uh, there should be no But 17.4 million people voted for that. No. 17.4 million people voted to leave the European Union. Yeah, so it doesn't matter whether it's no deal or not, does it? They all voted to leave. Yes, but I mean... Uh, so they did vote to be people, poorer. These people are not stupid, as has been inferred by certain people, uh, that we are stupid. And there's one thing, I'm, I don't pride myself on being the brain of Britain, but I'm not a stupid person. No. And I have been involved uh, through in my working life in negotiations as I was in uh, uh, sales. Yes. And I know that when you negotiate, you never ask for something without giving something away. That's what it's about. Yeah. And I have been involved in negotiations where people have, where I was prepared to walk away because I could not deliver what the, the, the buyer was asking for. Mm. And I said to them, I said, look, I've given you the price. I really can't uh, drop that anymore. And... And then, when, and then you walked away. And then you walked away to precisely the status quo that you were in before. On two occasions, on two occasions, these people backed down and yeah. agreed with the argument that I put forward. And I got... What did you sell? I was selling pest control. Okay. And you genuinely, and this is going to sound like a patronising question, but I promise you it isn't. You, you, you genuinely think that there are parallels to be drawn between selling pest control and negotiating withdrawal no, from the European Union. Negotiation, negotiation. It doesn't matter what the product is. Of course it matters. The pro it does if I, matter. If, of course it, it matters. If you're matter trying to sell me an antidote for a poison... Well, you can talk, Alison, if you want, or you can listen cars. to me. It doesn't matter if I was selling cars or chocolate biscuits. Well, of course it I matters. I negotiate. Yes, but the negotiation is completely different according to what it is that you're selling. If you're selling antidotes to people who've already been poisoned, the negotiation is going to be very different from selling antidotes to people who haven't been poisoned. If you're selling cars to people that don't have cars, things are going to go very, very differently than they would if you were trying to sell cars to people who do have cars. And when you walk I away... Know, James, so, James I, so I listen to you quite frequently, and, yes. you know, you just... You seem to have a penchant for tying people in knots. It's not a penchant, I mean, Alison. It's an occupational it's hazard of ringing in without knowing what you're talking about. So let's go back to when you were selling pest. Let's go back to when you were selling pest well, control. Let, let, let's put it this way. No, we're talking about not, the backstop then. in Ireland, right? Yeah. Now, Switzerland is not part of the European Union, yet lorries travel in and out of Switzerland through European Union countries. Yeah, and they get what checked. Yes, of course you do. Everybody has to get checked. When I travel... No, abroad, at the I moment, checked. when you go from the Republic of Ireland to Northern Ireland, you don't get checked. 
Well, I don't know. I've never been to Ireland. Well, well this is this is what you mean by a penchant for tying people in knots. You phoned in. You've used Switzerland as an example. It's fallen apart. You look ridiculous. I accept you're not stupid, and you feel this is somehow a result of my penchant for tying people in knots, rather than your <laughs> utter failure to do the most cursory of research. <laughs> It is funny, isn't yeah, it? I know. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what is But let's crack on. Say something I, else I meaningless. It, James, I see it as yes. black and white. I know 17. you do. 17.4 yeah. million voted to it's leave the European with Union. With no deal. Uh, uh, no, that was not part of the question oh, on the oh, ballot. Paper. Oh, well, hang on a minute I, I, then. I don't understand what mandate there is for leaving with no deal then. Well, we we... we We've had negotiations with them, which have fallen flat because they're no, not they haven't. They were successful. We came up with a withdrawal agreement. In the negotiations. The negotiations they were successful. Are, they are trying to. They are trying to punish 17.4 million. <laughs> they offered us a withdrawal agreement. They offered us a withdrawal agreement. And the reason, the reason no, that they're trying to, that they're trying to in Nazi, uh, yeah. block us at every turn is right. because the gravy train's going to hit. The oh, bumpers. I see. Yes. So, what was the withdrawal agreement then? The withdrawal agreement was, um, well, it was that, uh, well, I didn't like Theresa May because it would still tie us to the EU. Yes, but what was it? I mean, because from where I'm sitting, that was the result of quite lengthy negotiations. Well, it was voted down three times by yes. Parliament. Yes, yes, I know it was, but, but that's nothing to do with the EU, is it? And she gave an awful lot more away <laughs> than, than what, I mean... She and now, I say, now I say, for example, and you say... That we keep Northern Ireland in the EU. Pardon? That we keep Northern Ireland within the EU. Now that penchant for me tying people in knots has kicked in again because you've said something else <laughs> utterly ridiculous that you could have avoided by doing the most cursory of research. Shall we both giggle again now? Yeah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> anyway, I, I think by yeah. the, the democratic result, I've had to say... 17.4 million people voted to leave life. with no deal, you're claiming. Sorry? You're claiming 17.4 million people voted to leave with no, no deal. That, that question was not on the ballot paper. Well, what was on exactly. The ballot paper? Do you want to stay in the European Union yes. or, don't, or don't you want to stay? Yes, it doesn't matter how we leave. No deal is fine. Well, no deal was a possibility, but... Uh, that, but that's that what 17.4 million people that, voted for. That is the last... Is that, no, that wasn't on the ballot paper, James. I'm but, sorry. But that's my, but that's my point. That's my, that that's my point, Alison. Nobody voted to leave with no deal. 17.4 million people, or 17 people. You've got a lot of people that claiming they did. I'm glad, and this is evidence, as you said many times, that you're not stupid. I'm glad that you're not one of them. I guess they can only pull the wool so far down over your eyes. Anthony's in Brighton. Anthony, what would you like to say? I think um, it's very nice to talk to you, actually. Well, obviously, I but, but you why did because, you ring um, in? Um, election or referendum? Election, I think. OK. Um, basically, because I think we need, I think we need a bit of a shake up, because I think what we've got is a lot of. So you wouldn't want either candidate. I mean, you you wouldn't want Johnson to win then. Uh, I'd like to see Farage win, to be honest with you. In, in a general so election. Really put, yeah, general election. I think that okay. put the cat amongst the pigeons. Yes. So you don't want calmness and unity. I don't, I, to be honest with you, until we end up staying in the EU, yeah. right, which is basically what the EU want and what their controlling like cancer has spread amongst various people, yourself included. Yes, tell me what you mean um, by that, Anthony. Um, the EU wants to have control of everything. We want to be we want independence. The EU don't want us to be independent. Well, what do you right? mean by so, independent? Uh, we we want to have our own government telling us what to do rather than the European. So what do they tell you what to do at the moment? Well, they make laws. So, so what do they what do they tell you? Handheld. Yeah, what what do they tell you what to do? Well, they tell everybody what to do. They, they control just, everything. From for example, EU regulations on emissions for cars. EU yes. regulations on emissions. Like everything. So you want you want to be free to have a more polluting car. I want to be free to make my own decisions. But you won't be. You just said you wanted to be told what to do by your own government. Well, if that's what they choose, but at least we've elected these people. The well, people you you also Europe, elected Nigel Farage, elect. didn't you, to be an MEP? That's right. Yeah. But he has no he has no master control over the EU. But we don't, don't. You're against master control. control. You just said you were against that. 
That's right. I am against master control. He doesn't right. have any control in, in the So EU, apart from he? wanting our children to breathe dirtier air, what else do you feel aggrieved about? <laughs> It's all right picking on that. What I'm saying I'm only is, picking on the only example you've given, Anthony. You can't shoot no, the messenger, I, mate. What, what I was trying... The point I was trying to make, that was just an example. Yes, and uh, I want some better yeah. examples, if you don't mind. OK. 437 laws on hand towels. Is that necessary? On what? That's just red tape for... On hand towels. Name one. What? Name one of those I laws. Know. I don't know, because I've... Here you are on it. national radio, spouting lines that you can't support. Give me one example of the 437 laws that you're unhappy about. I think there's regulations on the size. The size of how You think there's regulations on the size of hand towels, yeah. and this is your evidence yeah. of being controlled. So you want dirtier air and enormous hand towels. Or yeah. tiny ones, I'm not clear. Is it tiny ones you want or enormous ones? I don't think there's any necessity to have laws on a hand towel. But you don't know what they are. But any law on a hand towel is ridiculous. You don't know, you, you don't know what... You, you, you can't really expect me to continue this conversation. Now, you use the analogy of cancer, and when I've asked you for examples of the symptoms of what you call a cancer, you're talking okay. gibberish about hand towels and All claiming right. that you oh. want to breathe dirtier air. Go on, third time okay. lucky, Tony. I, Fill I, your I, boots. I, I don't. <laughs> I love you. You're great. You're, yeah. you're just brilliant at making people look stupid. No, and nothing not. to do with me, Anthony. I just hold up mirrors. It's not my fault what you see. So let's have another crack. You want dirtier air and giant hand towels. What's the other evidence of Brussels control in your life? <laughs> I just I just want our government to be our government. Yeah, the example of control? Well, the, the, the government that we have, that we've elected, to be telling us what to do. Right, so if this government told you that you had to have emission controls on your cars and you weren't allowed enormous hand towels, you'd be happy with that, would you? Because it would be their decision that we've elected Yeah, but, it, but it, it, it's, it's their decision to enshrine laws that are passed collectively in the European Union, Anthony. Yeah, but they don't choose yes, they the do. European... Yes, no, they, they, they do, which is why you can't name any. So before you go, one last chance, because I'd hate you to feel you weren't given a fair crack of the whip. We want dirtier yeah. air and enormous hand towels, although we can't actually identify any laws, despite claiming that there are 437. We can't name any of them. What's the other big, big platform that proves your point about Brussels exercising undesirable control over us? Brussels, under, well, because the fact that... The, not right at the moment. It's right? not a trick question. So wait, wait, wait a few years. Yes, right? just just one more and example, because because I think hand towels and clean air haven't really worked for you. So give me the other one. When, when they dissolve our British army. When they dissolve our British army. That's right. Right, you are, mate. That's the future. And see, I think you need to go back to bed. <laughs> Ten forty-five. <laughs> Andy's in Glastonbury. Andy, what would you like to say? Hello. Can I have a few little sub-points before I make the main point? No. Sorry. Regulations. EU yeah. regulations. Yeah, I said no. So, so ele right. election or referendum? Right. Neither. Right. That, but we said we weren't going to do that today. Alex is in Leeds. Alex, what would you like to say? Christian's in Manchester. Christian, could things have gone differently? Uh, I think they could have gone differently, but only if the Commons was constituted differently right from the start. It was inevitable we in this position. Oh, it's, but, it's, it's, um, it's not a great phone line. I, I mean, th th if I've understood you correctly, that, that wouldn't be on the, the list of permissible contributions. I mean, obviously, when I say could things have gone differently, I mean in, in the world we inhabit. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, the, the thing I really wanted to do is cast a light at the moment on the Labour position, which I think is disingenuous to the extreme. OK, and if I'd asked about that, I'd, I'd welcome your call, but, but I didn't. So I'm asking how things could have gone differently. Well, how things could have gone differently uh, is if we had a general election much, much uh, uh, sooner than this. Uh, I we, think that we, things we, can we, only we, go differently one, now with a general election. We had one under Theresa May. We did. Yeah. So over under the course the, of the under last the prime minister under Remainer, under exactly. the last three years, how could things have gone differently? Um, I, I think that the government should have been brought down much sooner. Uh, when once it was apparent that this was um, a uh, effectively a Remainer um, uh, uh, government uh, acting reluctantly. But, but uh, in, Boris Johnson and Jacob Rees-Mogg both voted for the withdrawal agreement. Yes. They did. So they were Remainers as well, were they? No, they weren't Remainers. I so, mean, that's, but that's but that's the withdrawal agreement was, a, was Remainer legislation, if, 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 if the point you're making makes any sense at all. So surely anybody who voted for it ergo becomes, under your analysis, a Remainer? No, I don't think that's the so case. So how do you tell the difference between people who voted for the withdrawal agreement who are Remainers and people who voted for the withdrawal agreement who aren't Remainers? 
I don't think you need to. I think it's clear who well, the I want to, are. mate. Yeah, you know, tell me, are. how do you tell the difference? Because the only real test in, in Parliament has been who voted for the withdrawal agreement and who voted well, are you against seriously it. Seriously, telling me you don't know who the Remainers are and who the Leavers no, are. I'm, I'm seriously okay. asking you how you tell the difference because they both voted for the withdrawal agreement, and you think the withdrawal agreement didn't involve leaving. So how can they be Leavers if they voted to remain? I think they were trying to get through a situation that was relatively impossible because of how Parliament was constituted. So, as, we're, as so, so we're back to how could things have gone differently, and your answer is if, if we got to choose our think, MPs rather than elect them. I don't think they could have gone differently. My point is oh. that I think they can go differently, and there is an opportunity now for that to happen. Right. Just, just before you go, finally, how, how do you tell the difference between a withdrawal agreement voter who, who is a Lever and a withdrawal agreement voter who is a Remainer? by everything they say in the public domain. So they were being dishonest when they spoke or dishonest when they voted? No, I think that the people who uh, who voted uh, for the withdrawal agreement who had serious reservations about it... Well, uh, everybody had serious... Had serious every single person had serious reservations about it, especially the Remainers, because they wanted to remain. So, again, um, how, do you, how do you defend Jacob Rees-Mogg when he votes for it and when he votes against it? I'm just psychologically intrigued by where you've ended up. I'm not defending Jacob Rees-Mogg. OK, well, who are you defending? I'm not defending anybody. But well, I'm, they were in agreement. Well, you just sounded, you sounded like you were. Is. So who, who, who do you think is. has behaved well through this process, then? Um, I, I wouldn't say that any party has behaved particularly well. No party, well individuals, a politician, side, either, a politician no, no, you like. party as an in individual yes. uh, on either side of the House. I don't think any of them have covered themselves with glory. So who would you reconstitute the Commons with, then, if, if, if none of them are any good? It's impossible for me to say, because that would be down to a general election where the people would but, decide... But, but you rang in, literally, to say that, that the only way things could have gone differently would be by having a different House of Commons. I, I mean, please, don't, don't take offence, but how are you still singing from this hymn sheet when it's crumbled in your hands? If you'll forgive me, uh, what I'm trying to say yes. is that I think that things could not have gone differently thus far. But, but, but you've ended up but, on national radio without now, a single politician now, you can support. I, I think that uh, the, the point here yes. is, is what... House of Commons is returned after a general election, and it's either and for the first time it's, it's here, a, with, with, with respect, clear, it's not. I mean, I'm, I'm not asking well, that question. Time, you, for the first time here, so we I just want to know how you've ended up not not having a you single politician. Me I'd love you to answer my question, then I'll, I'll listen endlessly. But you can't make points that have nothing to do with the program that you phoned into. That would just be ridiculous. Okay, so well, how, how do you respect, think? How do you think you've ended up? Go on, tell me who. Uh, I've got I've got a great deal of respect for uh, uh, people like Theresa May. For, okay, but uh, she was a Remainer. Boris Johnson for yeah, and he and voted for the withdrawal agreement. Respect for them. Okay, it doesn't mean I don't have respect. So who would you who would you line up behind then? Well, it's moving forward to say at this stage because there's 21 MPs who yet have to uh, who, who have now obviously lost the whip and they're going to be uh, reselected or rather there's going to be reselections. But who would you other, line up behind? MPs. Uh, personally, I yes. would line up behind um, a, 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 a reconstituted Conservative Party. No, just one, one politician, based on the performance over the last three years, who would you line up behind? Well, ultimately, yes. uh, it has to be the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. But he voted for the withdrawal agreement that was a Remainer plot. I think Boris Johnson is extremely clear now, clearer than most. Yes. Uh, about what uh, he uh, uh, believes in and what... Uh, what does he what believe he in? Well, he voted for the withdrawal agreement, which was a remainder he wants to. He wants us to leave the European Union on the 31st of October, come what may. I think that that's... With or without it. a deal? With or without a deal, yes. yes. And, OK, and no, think... you, you crack on, Christian. Um, and then, of course, we come back to the hardy perennial of the fact that nobody knows what no deal means except the same people that lied about how easy it would be to get a deal. And there you are, still waving your little flag. Good luck. Tim's in Hatfield. Tim, what would you like to say? Afternoon, James. Nice to speak to you. Um, your, your question was, could you call me if I'm a Boris Johnson fan? And if you still remain a John, Boris Johnson fan... Uh, this afternoon, and I am, and I'm. Well, no, that, that was the precursor to the question of, of yes. Of, what, why won't he? Why won't he publish Operation Yellowhammer? Well, I think the original Operation Yellowhammer that was published was pretty much a one-sided document. It hasn't been published. Civil, civil service. It hasn't been published. Is, 
Well, well no, but it, but it was re- largely written by a civil service that is skewed to the Remain lobby, so it is a one-sided document. Yes, which is why they which is why they recommissioned a new one. So why won't they publish that? The problem the problem is the public here economic catastrophe. And no facts. Let, let's get one thing right. The worst case, we go to a WTO deal. Yes. We collect I'm roughly 12 billion... Sorry to interrupt we, you. Why, we, why won't they publish it, do you think, now that they've rewritten it to suit their own position? Well, uh, I think it's been reviewed to be, give a balanced argument. No, that's not true. It was ready to go two nights ago and Gove elected not to publish it because the public would be alarmed. So why, why do you think they didn't publish it? I don't think the public will be alarmed. I think it's been reviewed. Yes, but that's think, I, that's not true. So, so what, why won't they publish it? And if it I, is being I, reviewed, why didn't Boris Johnson say so in the House of Commons? No, I, I think I think I think it, it is being reviewed. And, so, why and didn't Boris Johnson say so in the House of Commons? No, but, but but let me finish. What no, why, why wouldn't Boris? Why didn't Boris Johnson? If what you say is true, why didn't the Prime Minister say it half an hour ago? Well, that's something you need to ask the Prime Minister. No, it isn't, because you, you, I said, ring me if you're a Boris Johnson fan, and you still are, and then answer these questions. And these questions yeah. are, why won't they publish Operation Yellowhammer? Because it's being reviewed. And it's if it reviewed. is you being... And if you answer document. the question, the second bit, as I said before you came on, is why wouldn't the Prime Minister say so in the House of Commons? Well, that's for you to ask the Prime Minister. No, 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 no. Be, we've, we've just been through this. You <laughs> rang in as someone who still admires yeah, yeah. him. I've asked you for your reasons for admiring him. You've offered up a complete nonsense about Operation Yellowhammer no, being reviewed. Be, be, no, 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 so the question then letting, becomes, if it's true... I know you don't you're need to finish. You need finish. to begin. Why didn't the Prime Minister say in the House of Commons that Operation Yellowhammer is under review? I know the answer to that question. You know the answer to that question. But we can't go any further until no, you no, actually no, say it out loud. I, I disagree. I disagree. What with? It's, no, this is really important. What do you disagree what is, with? What it, because what is coming from the Remainer side, it is an economic catastrophe. What do you leave. disagree with? But I disagree that it's an economic catastrophe to the League. But, but that's not what we're talking about. Be, why why you know, did he not no. say in the House of Commons that it's under review, Tim, if it's true? <laughs> you, that's what you need to ask him, but I can see... Well, I know why, because it's not true. So you need to tell me why he didn't say it. Well, you need to ask the Prime Minister. OK, That's well, I, I don't say. need to ask the Prime Minister because but, but, but it's not true. It's not under review. It's not under review, and you're telling, you're telling fibs no, 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 on no, no, national no, no. radio. You, you are saying... Where did you get the information that it's under review? That's what Michael Gove said. Where did you get the information that it's under review? That's what Michael Gove said. So why didn't the Prime Minister say it in the House of Commons? That's what you need to ask the Prime Minister. <laughs> OK. No, but seriously. Yeah, no, but seriously. Need... Yeah, 12.53... I don't know, perhaps just excited beyond belief about what Boris Johnson's doing. Or maybe uh, you're on the side of the, the rebels and you're appalled that they've lost the party whip. Let me know how you feel. Helen is in Hertfordshire. Hi, Helen. Hi, Eddie. How what, are you? I'm fine. What do you think of all this then? Well, I think Boris Johnson has made a great start, to be honest. I think he is trying to demonstrate good leadership. Um, he's trying to honour the promises of the electorate. Um, and I think it's doing absolutely the right thing. What about these um, uh, these MPs, some of them in the party for a very long time, who've now been told, we don't want you anymore? Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I think it's disgraceful. Um, the, the people who he says he doesn't want anymore have had nearly three years to sort it out. He's come in with a new team. He's actually trying to make a difference. And he's negotiating with Brussels, which is like the Eurovision Song Contest. You can only equate it to that. Um, and it, the taking is negotiating hand away by taking no deal off the table. Um, I think there's a lot of people self-interested. Um, I think his best shot at actually getting a deal was the strategy he, was, he started with. And, and he's actually dealing with the issues that concern the electorate like crime, the economy, social care. He's trying to do that, and I think he's been thwarted uh, deliberately. Helen, for how long have you been a Conservative? Uh, for about um, 20 years, because I think they're very good with the economy. Having said that, I came from a family in the North who were Labour supporters, um, but I've been a, a Conservative all my 20 years, my working life, really. And do the family still speak to you? Uh, well, my parents have passed now, um, but that said, I don't like what's happening with Jeremy Corbyn this afternoon, who has been asking for an election for about the last 
two and a half, three years, and now they're going, they're backtracking on that. So you really can't decide which way we're headed. But at least Jeremy Corbyn, uh, at least Boris Johnson was trying to demonstrate good leadership. Is and Boris Johnson the best that. Conservative leader you've seen? Yes, I think so, at the moment, in recent years, because David Cameron started this and left the party um, and left Theresa May, who did actually initially start to try and sort it out, but she was thwarted um, because there are a lot of people, whichever way you voted, to leave or to remain, who were trying to actually stall the process. Well, there you go, Helen. Big thumbs up for uh, Boris Johnson to kick us off. Uh, if you're Conservative, what do you think of what's happening in your party right now? Adam is in the Isle of Sheppey. Uh, Adam, we had from Helen earlier, thrilled with Boris Johnson. What about you? Yeah, totally. Oh, I'm really glad what he's doing, chucking out all the Tory rebels and trying to start fresh. I can be proud of the bloke. I think he's doing a really good job at the moment. I think he's trying his best under really tough circumstances that's been given to him. But just on a wider note, Eddie, I think what he should do if Corbyn denies him an election um, is go to Brussels. If this legislation is passed, go to Brussels, say we would like an extension, but then... There's nothing to say or to prevent him to turn around and say, oh, by the way, if you don't throw us out, yeah, we'll stay. But me as Prime Minister will actively work against this organisation and jam up v any legislation, veto anything that comes through. So you've got the choice. You can keep us in, but we'll make it difficult for you. You can just sling us out now. Another big supporter there, Adam. Thank you. Mike's in where? Mike, what would you like to say? Well, what I'd like to ask you, James, is I've oh, listened Mike, to... Oh, Mike, it, doesn't, it yeah. doesn't work like that, mate, until I'll ring your phone in show, all right, and answer your questions, but you've rung mine, so you answer mine, mate. OK, go on, then. Well, I've, What's my question? Well, why did you ring in? Why I rang in was because I support, as most of the country support, Boris Johnson's... So what question did you ring in to answer, then, Mike? What I, what I, I rang in to ask you... No, no, what question what? did you ring in to answer? Well, ask me why... We're not doing I mystery that, hour, mate. No, I, I, ask me why I think that the majority of the country support leaving the European Union without a deal. OK, Mike, wh me. why do you think the majority of the country support leaving the European Union without a deal, Mike? Because it's what the majority of people in this country voted for in the referendum. But, it's, but, it, but it's not, you see. Because it didn't say no deal. It didn't seem. It didn't say no deal on the ballot paper, and all the polling points to about twenty-eight percent support for no deal. So I mean, so I've asked you the. I've asked you the question. You've answered it in a fairly silly way, but that's fine. You know, we're all friends. So now I, I would point out that those of us who think perhaps that some levers are a little lacking in insight, um, or, or indeed, or indeed that they've swallowed. Uh, propaganda on a scale that is frankly astonishing is, is kind yeah. of summed up by the idea that you rang in a, to a phone-in show to answer a question but didn't understand how it worked. No, I phoned in to ask you a question. It's, like I said, you didn't understand how it worked. OK, well, if it works... So if you can't me, understand you something as simple as a radio phone-in, what makes no, you think no, you're no, qualified no, to no, understand no, something no. as complicated as the national I interest? I understand that you're a propaganda machine for the, for the Remain side. That's what I understand, and most of the listeners understand that. What you don't understand is... The... Bless him. Lee, hello. Hi, good afternoon, Sheila. Thanks for taking the call. Pleasure. Uh, Sheila, the point I want to get across here, I've been listening to LBC all day while I've been driving up and down oh, the motorway. <laughs> Is that a good experience uh, for you, uh, from, from, Lee? From Nick Ferrari <laughs> right the way through to you. Good. And uh, I, I haven't heard a single call yet to suggest that Boris... He, 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 here's my point. Boris is a very, very clever man who's dreamt and ambitious enough to be Prime Minister since he was probably school age. I'm sure you would agree. And yes. uh, I can't understand why he would want to be Prime Minister uh, for, uh, and go down as the shortest Prime Minister in history if he hadn't have planned for all of the things that were happening. Cummings is a very uh, articulate uh, advisor. He's probably got a team of people underneath him. And I think that every single contingency has been made for everything that has happened so far. I can't believe that it wouldn't have happened otherwise. They've gamed everything. They've war-gamed everything. 
it's not necessarily a game. I just think that. No, you know what uh, I mean, Bella. When you war game something, you work. You know, you you, 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 you flow chart every it. possible option. Yeah. yeah. If this happens, we'll do this. If this happens, we'll do that. If this happens and this happens and this happens, then we'll do this. This guy is going to go for an election. He's going to come away with an absolute landslide. I can. I, I can. I can just feel it. I, I'm, I'm a leader. You can feel it. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a leaver. Uh, James O'Brien uh, keeps telling uh, uh, me in particular through, through the airwaves that I don't know what I voted for. Uh, and uh, to What did you vote bit, for, Lee? Well, I, I voted to leave the uh, European Union and... On uh, any basis? Leave, uh, and on, 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 any, on any basis. Uh, and uh, it, it was... Uh, well, you're not alone. Uh, you're not alone. Paul Cracknell's no. tweeted well, to where, say, where are, where I, trust Boris, Boris, I trust Boris. I trust Boris. Let me just read these to you. Let's just yeah. so you know, you're not alone in that long journey in that car. Uh, okay. I trust Boris to stick to his promise to leave the EU on the 31st of October. Totally trust Boris 100%, says Millie. Uh, and Martin says, uh, landslide for Boris. I can feel it in the air. And you can feel it in your waters or wherever you're feeling it. Well, yeah, and it, it, I, I think trust is a bit of a, a strong word because I, I don't really think I could trust him as far as I could throw him. But at the same time, I don't. I really think that he knows strategically exactly what he is doing. Okay, well, why he, don't you he, and I? Well, let's go, let's go through yeah. this then. Let, let's let's predict the next uh, move, shall we? Um, he he tried uh, to get. Uh, what was the first thing he did? He tried to get um, no deal, sort of, you know, to be to be allowed by Parliament, and, and Parliament defeated yeah. him on that. He yeah. tried to bring an election yesterday, and Parliament defeated him on that. Um, his own brother has just resigned. I'm not sure he'd factored that one in. Mm -hmm. his, his own brother, Joe Johnson, has just resigned from yeah. the government. Um, yeah. uh, he... he he uh, had he factored in sacking 21 of his long-standing loyal conservative colleagues including two former chancellors maybe oh, but so, so maybe 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 not as many as 21 Sheila but at right. the same time do you honestly believe that when he took that job as prime minister that he didn't expect to go through these votes this week and did you honestly no, no, did no, I, no I, I don't I agree Dominic with you Greaves, I agree Dominic with you Greaves, not, 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 to, not to vote against the government no He's I going to win I, the vote let's I, be honest I agree with you I agree with you but but what I'm what I'm trying to get to is it, what you obviously think the outcome of all of these defeats will be victory. I just want to war game with you now why that will be the case and why it might not, why you think it will be the case and why I think there's still room for it not to be the case, depending on what would Labour you, do, what you, the other opposition parties do about that general election. Because would, Lee, you, would you like me to be, would you well, like me to be honest with you? Yeah. I have absolutely <laughs> no idea what the guy. You just feel it in be. your waters. You but, feel but, it in your waters. But, 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 but if you go back, all you can do in, in this fast, um, uh, fluid, uh, every day, every moment, it, something is changing. All you can do is look back, and I'm absolutely categorically certain that there's no way that a sane human being let alone somebody who had the ambitions of Boris, would ever go through what he's going through unless there was a strategic mechanism for him to get to the well, end game. Well, let me quote or paraphrase quote uh, a guest I had on the programme about a month ago. and We invited him on today, but he couldn't make it, actually. He was busy. Um, uh, Lloyd Evans went to university with Boris Johnson, has written about him um, and observed his career since and worked with him at The Spectator since. Uh -huh. He told us a few weeks ago when Boris Johnson became prime minister that his most comfortable position, you know, his, his comfort zone, that we all have comfort zones where we behave very instinctively, is when he's in a corner. And Lloyd predicted that he would build himself into a corner and then very much enjoy the process of getting himself out of that corner. So that, yes. that, that kind of tallies with what you have just said. Because uh, that's where he is. Yes, OK. But what I will say to you is he's been in corners before and the result has not been victory. See Michael Gove intervening and pulling the rug out from under him the last time around when Theresa May became yeah. Prime Minister. Yeah. And this is a corner like no other corner. This isn't a corner in the Oxford Debating Society. This isn't a corner in, in City Hall in London when he can flourish around about the about the olympics or whatever else he wants to talk You're about right. or his garden bridge or whatever this is the this is the long-term future of the nation and he doesn't yes. he doesn't have one or two political enemies he has an entire parliament almost 
But well, he knows who they are, Sheila. Yeah, I know, but they know who he is. And, and, and don't you think, honestly, do not think that he has planned for that eventuality. Do you, do you think, really think they think haven't? This, this guy... Do you think they oh. haven't? Yes, and, and this is why. You well, think they haven't? Said earlier about war. Oh, I think they have. I think, but but this is the war gaming that, that you, that you um, uh, uh, said about earlier. Yes, they are planning and they are plotting and they are doing everything they possibly can to thwart and uh, discourage and uh, uh, discredit a no deal Brexit. In, uh, well, yes, uh, uh, the, the long game. But my my argument is this: is, this is the reason why I'm calling in. Do you not think, or does anyone not think, that he has not made plans, agendas... Um, uh, but do you, uh, but I say to you again, Lee, do you think the others haven't? Yes, they have. But yeah. I, I think I think he's outfoxed them already. How? He knows what they're going to be. He knows... Well, uh, I could have told you what was happening uh, today... Uh, a week ago. <laughs> well, well, I, well. I, I don't believe you, because you, you, I asked you to tell me what's happening next week, and you lost your crystal ball. <laughs> but we were asking me today what's going to happen next week. Yeah. I've got absolutely no idea. Well, there you go. I d I'm not sure I trust your foresight on this, Lee. Thank you. you I'm, I may be proved very wrong. Thank you. Lee in Exeter. I want to hear from Judy in Colchester before we go to the news at three. Judy, hello. Hello, Sheila. Um, I've, I've laid off making any phone calls so far to LBC about Brexit. But this last couple of days, I just have found it so distasteful. Um, I know lots of people are thinking that way. Um, I can't understand how in the short space of six weeks this vitriol towards Boris Johnson has come about. It is not just, you know, people moaning. It is vitriol. Watching um, the, the last couple of days in Parliament um, yesterday, yesterday evening, <coughs> it... it, it Sheila, people are being so rude, so offensive, so sarcastic. He's the one who swore in Parliament yesterday, Judy. Well, I'm not saying he didn't, Sheila. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, that they're all as bad as one another. But, but, in all this, I, no, I haven't heard anyone come up with what should be done, what can actually be done, and who is going to do it. And if it's not, do you know the only person whose job that is is Boris Johnson's? Well, it may be Sheila, but it but he won't tell them. When, he won't even when, tell them in closed session. In you know, if 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 things are politically sensitive or security sensitive, he won't even tell them in those settings. And and oh. what what you're describing as vitriol under our parliamentary system is actually simply accountability. Well, it may be all those things, Sheila. It is those I things. I am just an ordinary lady living so an I. ordinary life. And it is not, not it, it is just so frustrating because if we go on again past the 31st of October with another gap in all that time, Sheila, mm. all the things that are important to ordinary, everyday people are not getting. Done. Well, they're, they're, done, but, they're not getting but Judy, at. there'll be a general election very soon. It might not be the 15th of October, it might not be the 31st of October, but there's a general election very soon. And that's an opportunity for you, me and everybody else to change the nature of the House of Commons by putting different people in there. Uh, and it may be that the views on balance are similar to those that are in there now, but the only way to find out is to have a general election. But the only way to stop... Uh, the chaos is either that or a people's vote, a second referendum. We're going to talk about that after the news at three with Roland Rudd. Uh, Hamish is in uh, Edinburgh. Hi, Hamish. Hi, good afternoon, Eddie. Um, I'm not spoken to you before, but um, anyway, I've been a Labour lifelong supporter for 25 years. And I have to say, I'm ashamed to be a Labour member and I've actually torn up my membership. And I'll tell you the two reasons why I've done that. First of all, Never in my life would I have imagined a Labour Party led by this Jeremy Corbyn, also known as a coward, that he would have confidence in a Tory government not to actually challenge Mr Corbyn, at, uh, Mr Johnson at the ballot box. And I've got no time for Mr Johnson. I'm, I'm not into his politics in any way, shape or form. And I completely disagree with Brexit. But I have to say, with Mr Corbyn at the helm of this ship, it's even worse than the Titanic. It's already sank. And my God, what is happening with the Labour Party today to actually stand up at the, the dispatch box and tell members 
that they do not want to have an election. Where is the confidence in the opposition of Her Majesty's government, Eddie? What, what caused you to tear up your membership card? Because I am ashamed to be a Labour Party member. I'm 55 years old now and I'm about to get into my retirement. I've been a bus driver for almost 30 years, Hamish. But I have to say, I have never seen a shambolic example of an opposition party led by this man, Mr Corbyn, who claims to be the man of the people. My God, this man couldn't win a raffle, never mind an election. Well, I think the argument, Hamish, I think the argument, Hamish, well, you say bottled it. Did you hear Susanna and Michael? They're both of the view that that they can't trust and that Labour can't trust Boris Johnson not to shift the date of the election. The worry is that if Labour says, sure, let's have the election on October the 15th, uh, there's nothing stopping Boris Johnson, if he wants to, from moving it, perhaps until just after the date of Brexit. Wouldn't it be better to wait? Well, Eddie, you've asked a rather um, strange question. It's a bit of an oxymoron. How the hell are we supposed to put trust in politics? They can't even trust each other. And now they're saying to us that we can't trust the opposition party. Hang on a second. Put it to the people and let them decide who they want to put trust in. Because there's no trust in politics at the moment. This shower of conservative Labour and SNP and Liberal Democrats are not much better we need to get a clean sweep, get all the cobwebs out of Parliament and actually get people inside there who actually understand what it is to be there and they are mandated by the people of the United Kingdom. Well, the thing is, hey, much all, all the people who are there right now were mandated in an election in yeah, 2017. They've actually given up their, their obligation. They have not listened to the spirit of this vote that we had in the first place and as i said to you i'm not involved i'm not a fan of brexit in any way shape or form i would like us to be in the european union and i would like scotland to be part of the united kingdom eddie but i have to say if we continue down this line with the labor party her majesty's opposition that do not want to go to an election when they have a chance of gaining power simply because of semantics they don't get to pick and choose the time. That's why they're the opposition, Eddie. Hamish, do me a favour. Do me a favour. Could you stay right there? I want to introduce you to uh, Lola, who's called in. Uh, Lola, you're a Labour councillor, I believe. Is that right? Yes, I'm a Labour parish councillor, yes. Uh, so, tell me what you think your party should do. You heard Hamish. He thinks it's appalling that Jeremy Corbyn isn't going straight away for an election. Well, I mean, obviously, you can say that, but at the end of the day, you have to um, basically look at what's been happening in the past few weeks. Uh, we have a, a prime minister that says one thing openly to the public and then changes his mind, you know, a couple of days after. Can you trust him? No, we can't. We are in a position whereby we need to be strategic in the way that we do things. And one of our strategies is basically to gather momentum and to have enough time to prepare and to campaign and to ensure that, you know, we win people to our side. We cannot go to an election knowing that, yes, it could stay 15th of October, then he changes his mind and say, no, it's not going to happen until next year. So, Lola, what's your preferred election date? Are you thinking end of November? I am seriously thinking end of November. All right. And obviously, we would have seen what's going to happen with Brexit. And what he's saying, whether he's going to, you know, stick to what he said. So, we, we, you know, you can't blame Jeremy Corbyn for everything. The man is trying his best. He's trying to please everyone. I mean, I think that is one of his weakness, trying to please everybody. But you can't please everybody. He, yes, he needs to possibly man up at some point and say, this is where we stand. This is what we need to do. And basically just do it. Rather than being pulled like a puppet, you know. So I do not believe we need to go for election now. Well, let's see, Lola, if you've managed to convince uh, Hamish. Hamish, you heard Lola. What about her arguments? Well, it's kind of ironic. She comes out and says that uh, Mr Johnson can't be trusted, and we've heard nothing but from Mr Corbyn in the last two years how desperately he wants to bring on an election, and when he gets a golden opportunity put in front of his hands, he decides, hang on a minute, I'd rather have confidence in the government. What a hypocritical person Jeremy Corbyn is. He should be ashamed of himself. He's put the Labour Party into disrepute and this country is in a complete mess. We need to get an election. We need to have a decision and Mr Corbyn needs to man up. Hamish, I'm worried about your blood pressure. Uh, Lola. So am I. So am I. Raj is in Slough. Raj, what would you like to say? 
Hi, James. Uh, yeah, I just want to talk on that on that notion of um, honesty and um, facts rather than um, any mm. biased view in any one direction. Uh, for example, um, I voted Remain. Um, I'm quite happy to stay in the EU, but I realise it's not um, the be-all and end-all. You know, the EU is quite a corrupt organisation in itself. Um, the fact that they're not letting us leave um, on a reasonable basis uh, with at least some level of compromise, they say, well, it's either our way or mm, no way. Well, no, they, they said the four, the four freedoms are indivisible, but they said that before the referendum result. They just haven't changed. Sure, sure. They, they, they may well have done, but uh, what I'm trying to say is that even though I voted Remain, I do think that there is... Yes, but I'm, I'm, I'm examining your reasons. I'm, I'm examining your reasons for, for analysis. The yeah. idea that they won't let us leave is simply not true. Okay, um, but they're, they're playing hardball. I mean, they're playing no, hardball. No, no, they're, they're sticking to precisely the position that they explained before the referendum result. Okay, well... The four freedoms following, are following, indivisible. Following, the integrity of the four freedoms is sure. a raison d'etre of the European through, Union. Then, yes. Following the argument through, if you, if you join a club and you wish, and you're not 100% happy with some aspects of it, you, you'd much rather remain in the club, but... You, you, you say to them, look, I'd much rather remain, but this particular aspect, can we can we look at this aspect? Yes, well, if we did, didn't saying, we? We're not in the single currency or shame. No, no, but, but, but if the club is saying, no way, you, we're not even going to going to countenance, uh, going to consider that... that uh, so what, that what, 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 what are then, you talking about, Raj? What do you think would have been filed <laughs> under things they could have changed? Then I would say we will have no other option except... No, but you see, I, you're giving me rhetoric but no detail. So what are the things that you think the European Union should have given special treatment to the United Kingdom for? What areas, what issues, what policies? I think, I think basically, um, I think one of the major issues that I think people voted Brexit on um, was uh, the freedom of movement. Yes, but now so, we're back to the indivisibility of the four freedoms. So uh, this is getting a bit embarrassing for you now, mate. <laughs> well... I mean, I, I, I am personally in favour of freedom of movement, but I, but I, but I, that's my point. Is that I, I do, I do, I yes, do. But you've have come on the radio and you've said they won't let us leave, and they should have given us something back then. And I've said the indivisibility of the four freedoms is is absolutely non-negotiable. Always has been, always will be. So okay. you, I mean, you're you're arguing against I, reality now, mate. Yeah, no, you're you're, you're absolutely right. But, I but know. can I can I can I can I just say that um, can I just change my uh, phrasing? Well, you uh, can withdraw then. what you've previously said and say they're not they're not refusing. <laughs> Refusing to let us leave, and they haven't budged one inch from their established I would negotiating say they're, they're position. Gracious. I would say that they're, they're not being gracious. They're far from being gracious. When did they compare us to leave. concentration camp guards? Okay. If you, or, or was if you, that or was that Boris Johnson talking about them? James. James, James. I mean, basically, Raj, Raj, Raj. What, 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 I, what I call about to call, but no, but you know, you know how I feel Russians. about empty, empty slogans, hey, don't you? And and and, and, and ludicrous rhetorical argument. flourishes. So they're not, okay. they're not refusing to let if us you, leave. They haven't been are, ungracious if you are in to us. Electricity supplier. <laughs> if you are in contract with an electricity supplier, yeah. and you find that your electricity supplier is charging you too much, yes. okay, and you decide to leave. And you say, look, I'm sorry, electricity supplier, I'm going to leave. I'm going to, you know, my family, I want to stay, but my family has said I've got to leave. Yes. And the electricity supplier says, well, you know, they're, they're very ungracious about you leaving. But, but you've used that okay. word ungracious again. Well, but I'm sorry, but you have been ungracious. How? Give me an example. Leaving. They haven't. They haven't uh, entered into any talks with us. They've any, negotiated they with us for over two time. years and got 27 okay. separate Reasonably, countries to, 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 to agree. Example, on, on, that, on that same basis, if, if, if I want to, if my family wants to leave the electricity supply, but I'm quite happy to stay. No, no, don't stop, 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 stop that. But we'll get, I want the examples of, of a lack no, no, of no, grace. If I explain it to the electricity supplier and the electricity this supplier is awful, say, Raj. Look, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk to you, Raj. Okay, but yeah. if the electricity... That's, that's they, the spoke to you for two, they spoke to you for if two and a half years, Raj, and they got 26 the other electricity companies to the, agree. If the electricity supplier say, hang on Mate, a minute, this is Raj, awful, Raj. No, hang on a minute, Raj. Yes. We will at least listen to the concerns of your family. We understand that... For you over two people, years. We'll at least listen to the concerns of your family. For, for over two years. For over two okay. years. If the EU had been happy to alleviate some of the concerns of the Brexit voters... Well, now we're back to what concern? I would, I would, I would consider them... But, to be Rod, you're not making any sense. They've done that. You're not I making... Feel they've done that. I OK, they've so now I come back to the question of what concern should they have been more accommodating of? And you say immigration and I say four freedoms. And we're back to where we started. We both just wasted ten <laughs> minutes of our lives. Luckily, one of us has learned something. It's 11.16. <laughs> I know he's a more.